Now coming to the property of the D block that is the alloy formation. You will be surprised to know that most of the alloys which we see in our general routine life that is the brass, bronze, uh, this thing gun metal and many more. Actually, you know that uh, these alloys are actually made up of transition elements. As you know that brass is formed of copper and zinc, copper and tin. Likewise, there are many actually, uh, you know, most of the transition elements, they actually lead to the formation of the alloy. You know that uh, what is alloy actually, as you all know, but still I want you to discuss it again with me, that alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals. Alloy is an homogeneous mixture of two or more metals. So that means what we do actually, we take selected metals of desired properties, we heat them and what happens? They melt and when they melt together, they just combine to form a single substance. That is what is the alloy. And now it is going to possess the properties of both the metals, both the desired properties. So here uh, what I am talking about is that the, uh, during the alloy formation, many, uh, the elements which are actually used, the metals which are actually used are transition elements. And you know that why the, the alloys are actually formed of transition elements? This is the, the reason behind it is that they are of comparable sizes. Their sizes are almost same. So what happened, see uh, what I have told you that whenever the alloy is formed, uh, the uh, place of one atom is to be uh, substituted by the another atom. So this can happen easily actually because they are of comparable size. Suppose we heat them, we uh, the lattice just uh, open gets open. So what happened when we when they start uh, uh, you can say when we cool them after that, after heating them they melt and then when they are cooling down. So what happened? The uh, element of any transition element can actually take place of the another. So they can easily substitute their places and this is what we need in the formation of alloy that means the crystal lattice, the definite arrangement should get disturbed actually and it should be uh, substituted by another element. This is what can happen in case of the alloy formation. So that, that is the reason they are generally found in the company position of uh, many alloys. Likewise, they have the catalytic properties also. As you all know that catalyst is a substance which can affect the rate of reaction without undergoing any change in itself. Right? Catalyst is a substance which can affect the rate of reaction without undergoing any change in itself. So as we have seen about the catalytic properties or about catalyst, there are many transition elements, they are mostly actually transition elements which are playing a role as a catalyst. Like we have nickel, we have vanadium pentoxide, we have palladium, we have platinum, these all are actually the transition elements. And you know that what is the reason that they can act as a catalyst? See, what the catalyst is going to do, it is going to affect the rate of reaction. It can increase the rate of reaction and uh, likewise it can decrease the rate of reaction. So that means it has an effect on, on the rate of the reaction. And to affect the rate of the reaction, like suppose I want my catalyst to increase the rate of reaction. So the how it can, it is going to increase. Either it will help in the adsorption process, that means in the intermediate formation uh, complex that we have already discussed when we were discussing the catalysis. And uh, second, what it can do is it can just lower the energy barrier so that more and more reactant can cross that energy barrier and they can cause effective collisions. So catalyst can, uh, uh, this thing, the transition element can actually fulfill both of the function. One is that it has vacant the orbital. It has actually a vacant d orbital and uh, due to it, it, it uh, due to it, it can actually carry out the adsorption which is required and uh, moreover uh, like when the adsorption is occurred, so that means it will lead to a com this thing intermediate complex formation also. So this can actually happen easily in this case for the transition elements and moreover what it can do is it can lower the energy barrier also. It can lower the energy barrier also which is required uh, so that more and more reactant can cross that energy barrier to cause effective collisions and this is what we need because if there will be collision, effective collision then only the old bonds will get uh, uh, this thing broken and the new bonds will be formed. This is what we need in it actually. So we can say that transition elements can, can uh, they act as catalyst because they can perform, uh, the, they can actually affect the rate of reaction by performing two important tasks that it can help in the intermediate formation, it can provide the surface area for the intermediate formation or a reaction to occur and second it can lower the energy barrier. So this is what is the catalytic property. Now moreover we have few more properties like uh, we are discussing about the magnetic properties. 
So, if we talk about magnetic properties, we have uh, depending upon magnetic behavior, we have many kind of behavior what we see in daily routine that is the paramagnetism, diamagnetism, ferromagnetism, we have such kind. So, uh, here uh, what I have taken is, I have taken two important magnetic properties that is paramagnetic and diamagnetic. So, what is the difference between two? Paramagnetic substance is that which gets attracted to the magnetic field and diamagnetic is that which, uh, which face which is repelled actually by the magnetic field or uh, you can say a substance will act as paramagnetic if it has an attraction for the magnetic field and if it has a repulsion it is called as diamagnetic. Now what suggests that the substance is going to be paramagnetic or what suggests that the substance is going to be diamagnetic? It is only the electrons, it is only the electrons. For paramagnetic character the substance should have unpaired electron and for diamagnetic behavior it is shown by paired electrons. Right. So, if we observe like when we are moving in transition series, we know that like for example, we are moving in first transition series, there is filling of uh, this thing uh, the 3D and 4S orbitals. So, what happened? You start with scandium, it is 3D1, then 3D2, 3, 4, 5, likewise successively the D orbital is being filled. So, we say that uh, when it starts filling, actually the unpaired electrons are increasing. And as we know when the unpaired electrons are increasing that means paramagnetic behavior is increasing. But after D5 what you observe, see this is my D. So, the time I reach this point then afterwards if I will add more electron to the D obviously the pairing is going to take place. So, that means unpaired electron is going to decrease and when there is decrease in unpaired electrons we know that there is decrease in the paramagnetic character or you can say there is an increase in diamagnetic character that time. So, we will say that as we move in a period the as the unpaired electrons are increasing so paramagnetic character is also increasing. But after D5 we observe the pairing and the pairing leads to decrease in the paramagnetic character and increase in the diamagnetic character. So, this is what is the magnetic behavior. And uh, you know that uh, if we want to see uh, actually we can calculate about the magnetic behavior by looking at the magnetic moment and we can calculate it by this formula that is mu is equal to n into n plus 2 square root or you can say the Bohr magneton. So, as there is more value of magnetic moment, so more is the paramagnetic character, less value of magnetic moment, less is the paramagnetic character. So, this is what you can account for the uh, magnetic character for the d orbitals. Likewise, we have the chemical reactivity also one of the property. So, we have seen that uh, like uh, we have D block elements here, we have S here and P this side, right. So, if we compare our D block elements with the S1, they are of smaller size, right. And if we compare with the P, they are of more intermediate size. So, what we actually observe if we talk about their reactivity, so they are generally less reactive, they are generally less reactive as compared to the S and P both. The reason being they have high ionization energy, they have high sublimation energy and they have low heat of hydration. For the substance to be reactive it should have the low ion, uh, this thing the low ionization energy so that we can easily extract the electron and likewise it should have the low sublimation energy because any electron uh, enters into the orbit or uh, leaves the orbit it happens only when the atom is in gaseous state. So, the uh, so for doing any of the task we need to convert the uh, solid metal form into the gaseous state and there we need energy that is equal to called as sublimation energy. So, it should be low actually but in case of transition elements it is high right and likewise low heat of hydration that means when it is dissolved in water because most of the reaction occur in the aqueous medium. So, the energy which is liberated is actually very low and as we know more is the energy liberated more stable is going to be the compound. So, this does not happen in case of this uh, deep block elements. So, we can account for their less reactivity that they are actually less chemically reactive, but still uh, you know that we found them uh, in a reactive state with some of the elements and they are generally sulphur 
oxygen and halogens sulfur oxygen and halogens they mostly found in uh, combination with these elements that is sulfur oxygen and halogen and you know that uh, when they combine as i've already we have discussed that they can show a uh, different kind of oxidation states actually so when they combine uh, they have a compound with low oxidation state also they have a compound with high oxidation state also so when they have a compound with low oxidation state that means it possess many unpaired electrons and when many unpaired electrons are present that account for its basic character because it has the, now the more it has the electrons actually which it can donate it to another but when the compound is present in higher oxidation state it means there is no unpaired electron left all of them is just used in the bonding so that means they are now, now going to act as acids lewis acids because they need electrons now right so this is what uh, how you can account for the uh, uh, compound with the low oxidation state that it is basic or acidic or how you can account for their less reactivity and uh, this is what is the chemical reactivity right i think you got it and uh, whenever you are talking about chemical reactivity just make it clear that what are the reasons actually which uh, determines its uh, any uh, reactivity and moreover see when we are talking about alloy when we are talking about catalyst we are talking about magnetic behavior we are talking about reactivity or we are talking about any other property you should be clear in your mind that what factors you have to focus for this element because actually the factors are same for even it is s block p block or d block the factor is just the same right as uh, you have some of your friend and you have to uh, make out that whether your friend uh, is a good friend or a bad friend there are certain set of qualities that a person should fulfill right so that qualities remain same whether you look for a boy whether you look for a girl whether you look for a uh, any human being so this those properties actually decides that uh, whether the person is a good or a bad likewise when you talk about the alloys or the catalyst or any of the properties they are the basic factors actually uh, on which those properties depends or which determine that uh, uh, what is what is the nature of this property for this given element so just focus on that uh, basic uh, thing that determines the property and as you will be um, have you will be clear in your thoughts about that um, uh, the factors on which the property is depend you will be easily going to make out uh, that uh, what this element is going to behave because all the properties are almost interrelated right so this is what is the alloy catalyst and magnetic behavior and the chemical reactivity so now we are going to look for many more properties just look at the board